It's lit. Another one. Oh, you can't stop this one. I mean, unless you're Comcast. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Come random computer. FCC. Yeah. Microsoft. <laughs> Twitch. The entire uh, country of Australia, for some reason. <laughs> Some uh, over eager raccoon by Brian's power supply. Mm -hmm. It's just AWS. That's the only way yeah. this is going down. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hi, everybody. It is August 1st. Ooh. Ooh. August. I know, right? I know. This year, it, it's flying. It's freaking flying. Hello, everybody. We'll get started in just a moment with the Weird Things podcast. Yeah. Uh, now, now, who is that? Oh, who's this? Oh, oh, Who are these uh, dulcet tones? Uh, uh, this is our new applicant. Applicant, state your name. Oh, I mean, uh, uh, while I was while I was abroad, I've uh, come by another name, uh, Jean Pierre <laughs> uh, Gerbils. <laughs> Jean Gerbils. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah, that sounded awfully close oh. to a World War II joke. No, <laughs> no, no. Nope. He's went, in America now. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, no, I went the entire time. I went the entire time without bringing up World War II to a German citizen. That, I was mm, very proud of myself. A very specific wording he used there, audience. That was my goal. Hi, my, hypothetically. Yeah. What What would you have? <laughs> Hey, remember? I, I, remember that time there was that uh, war? He may have been taking notes. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to? Do you want to hear my list of times yeah, I didn't I, make? I, uh, I feel like you're burning material uh -huh. for tomorrow. Oh, oh, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry. That's not all I have on my list. Uh, uh, times I didn't make a World War II joke when uh, uh, in front of a German citizen or with a German citizen when our train made an unexpected stop in Nuremberg. <laughs> Uh, when Ashley explained that in German, the weird letter that looks like a giant B is actually SS. That's right. That's, that's just... uh, and then when Ashley joked uh, about how it was so hot in the glass dome of the Reichstag that we should bring super soakers. <laughs> I mean, this These were be, all times this, this that, I did, the not, whole show. that uh, I did not uh, make did not. a joke. That's the fuck. That that is that's the that that that's the 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 the, the flugen uh, uh, Z material, my friend. Uh, okay, all right. Z material. A Z. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. We got we got we got good stuff for 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 great night. All but, right. Hello, everybody. I was uh, once in, I was in Shanghai talking to a Belgian, and he was talking about like your know, European reputation. He goes, "Well, you know, nobody hates the Belgians." And I'm like. Have you heard of the Congo? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> he goes, oh, yeah, that. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, like nobody, nobody gets off, nobody. everybody. Like, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. All right. We want to do some weird things, guys? Let's weird yeah. some things. Yeah, weird it up. All right, Andrew, I'm going to count you in. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things podcast. I'm Andrew Main. Just me. Just me today, folks. Wait a minute. Wait, Why? Wait. Shh. Can 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 I join you? Yeah. Ooh. <sighs> All right, Brian, you're in. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, yeah. Okay, because wait, wait. it's always uh, been just uh, the two of us. Excuse me. Excuse me, so, though. Can I please? Be yes. A part of it? Yes, yeah. heckler. Bryce can join us too. Thank okay. you. Well, oh, oh wait, 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 wait. Oh, here. Brian, be... I let you in. Yeah. Now you're just letting people in. No, like, I'm, uh... I'm re-letting Bryce back in. Tumbleweed he's, sounds. He's, he's barely people. It's, uh, Cactus he, he, weird sounds. Al, weird Al Bryce now with the hair let down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with this. It's, I'm it's cool with it. Good. I'm a big yeah. fan. I think it, it, looks, good. I think it looks good. Thank yeah. you. I think it looks good. He should Hello. sell art supplies. Now, who are you? Who am I? Oh. Uh, my name is Justin Robert Young. I'm, a, I'm one of the co-hosts. I, I was here for a few weeks, and now I'm back. Welcome back. Hey! Yeah. Hell of a way to get welcomed so, back. So, so, so we're doing, like, early Beatles. Uh, oh, come give me Dinah Hand. All those old songs. Hey. What? Who is it? Pete. Pete who? Pete Best. Oh, Sorry. No, no, no. 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 Who's that? Stuart. Stuart who? Wait, no, 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 no. I did, I did take a train through Hamburg. Delicious. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
you go uh, like work on your set there you yeah, know yeah, in the early, underground to get really good before or, just jumping back to america mm-hmm. uh, cut d- your teeth d- 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 so, so is this your your uh uh justin mania moment where it's like uh <laughs> you finally come to the united states yep yeah i'm fi- i'm breaking through I'm there, breaking through. Like, I've, 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 gone, I've gone across the pond, and uh, me and Ed Sullivan's going to have me on his podcast a little bit later, uh, and, uh, and maybe, the, world, the world's never going to be the same. Uh, quick question. What did you mean when you were saying that you were better than Jesus Christ? I think it was bigger, self-explanatory. Bigger. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> he said he was okay. All right. bigger. bigger, Brian. Bigger. Yeah, totally yeah. Bigger, bigger. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, because people are bigger now. Well, also, yes, yeah, compared yeah, to historically. The, the, in the manger, baby. <laughs> like, yeah, I could dunk on baby Jesus. I really feel <laughs> that. I mean, we might have to lower the rim, but but he's not going to be able to get up there and block it. Hell no. Uh uh-uh. uh. He's got no game. <laughs> exactly. I'll knock. I'll knock the frankincense out of that child. <laughs> Just dump that basketball right on his head. This is why we sent you to the European League. Exactly, I know. <laughs> this is why we sent you off there because of this this off court behavior. That's well, just well, and and I guess now we can finally announce the secret mis- mission mm-hmm. that, that Justin was on. Yep, we can. Oh uh, yeah, the the secret mission. Yes, as as we all know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Duh. We're here in America. <laughs> uh huh. And Justin. It, I was, was in uh, Europe. Yep. Yeah. In, in 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 England and right? in the Netherlands. And what did you discover in jolly old Europe? That old fog co- uh, continent. When you're in Holland, yes, they call the people the Dutch. Yes, and not Hollandaise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's. Uh, I'm gonna mark that down as one <laughs> observation. Two thumbs up. One observation. What other <laughs> observational moments? You want did me you to have? follow up? Come on! I feel like I, I feel like I, I neatly got us out of that bit. Oh no! I mean, you landed it so well. It's just like now oh I want to, God. now I want to see loop de loops and stuff. It's a fully reusable, you know. It's like we have a uh, weird story. Isn't that what happens on this show? We do. Hey, uh, you know, a man came you know back from Europe. Babies are made in Scandinavia. When a man and a woman love each other very much, they lay together and then they say, we are finished. So uh, I got some. Uh, you ever? I loved it. You guys want to take a trip to the uh, the supermarket? Yeah, let's do it. I mean, let's at these snacks. I, 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 we, better, we better hustle at these prices. That's true. Uh, let's get some snacks. Let's go to the the snack aisle, mm-hmm. like chips and all that sort of stuff. Uh, yep. Uh, Bryce, I want you to just pick something out. Pick something out. Put in the cart. Oh, okay. I'm gonna get some of these uh, Snyder's pretzels. Can I get the little, little oh, cool. pretz- snack pretzels? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Uh, we'll do a movie night too, just so you know. We're gonna watch Ooh. a movie. Oh, figure good. Out what we're gonna watch. Good. Good. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Justin, what do you want to get? Oh, I'm getting uh, a a a family bag of Sun Chips. Ooh, Sun Chips. Ooh, That's a great good. Sun Chips. Good. Yeah. And get the family bag so it's not as loud as a little crinkly. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we can yeah. pour it out into a bowl or something. Oh, nice, quiet. Bowl. Yeah, my my brother would crack up because my dad and I he'd watch my dad and I walk into a movie theater and we'd get like he'd get the, the movie theater candy which was the box of the bag inside, and he'd see me. I'd open up the box, I'd take out the bag, rip open the bag, and dump the bag into the box so it would be quiet so it wouldn't crinkle oh, and nice. my dad would walk through there take the box through the box we just have the bag and that just my brother was hysterical because like my dad like and i'm like trying to be quiet and just the study in contrast uh brian, brian what are you gonna get well i i uh, snack time not for me but it's enough for you but it, but it seems like everybody's always asking if i have any and the answer is no so i'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up a full bar of Delta 8 THC infused chocolate, just in case. A lot of people asking if you got the Delta. A lot of uh, uh, all I know is, 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 uh, you love to fly and it shows. No, people love <laughs> to give me those. So oh. I assume I should have them to give back out. It's like, it's like I don't want to be the old lady with pennies on it's Halloween. A, it's <laughs> the millennial take a penny, leave a penny. Yeah, right? <laughs> Wait, do you have a problem with too many people giving you Delta 8 uh, uh, edibles? Just real quick. Uh, uh, Find a problem. While, while I was gone. <laughs> pic- picture 10 people who you know I know. 
uh, who some of whom run vape shops. Uh, <laughs> oh, gotcha. Uh, and then they're they're just constantly uh, 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 gifting me chocolates. Huh? Yeah. Well, that's a All that's right. a that's a burden. Well, I mean, right, I mean well, wait, not if I have in, a hookup of somebody who wants to have them. Yeah, uh, wants to have chocolates. Yeah. Uh, so back to our movie night snack yeah. snack aisle. Mm -hmm. in, in We're watching two thousand one, right? Brian, yeah, Brian's hippie hippie friends and whatever those hippies do these days. Um, hippies everywhere. That's all uh -huh. I see it. Uh, yeah, hey, Brian, okay. grab something for now. What are you, you going to put in the cart? Uh, I, I'll do I'll something for you. I'll, I'll do a Reese's. Mm. Ooh, a Reese's. The Reese's cups. The Reese's little. little yeah. Little what do you think? Pieces, Reese's pieces, or or the real cups? Real Reese's. Reese's real cups. Real is Reese's. Nice. Got gotcha. you. They're good cups. Because okay. because right. if you do it right, you 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 take your finger and you poke it and you 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 like have a divot that becomes it becomes like just a, a cylinder, right? Okay. And, and then you All right. Work what your else? Way what else we got? There's some more. We got some more room in the cart. Oh, yeah, I would say some Mike and Ike's. Oh, Mike and Ike's, yeah. Oh, good. Let's talk we're not in that aisle yet. Actually, Mollies, we're, still in the, we're, still, we're still in the chip, chip aisle. Oh, in the I'll chip aisle. Oh, okay. What about yeah. a cool, cool ranch? Some Doritos? Maybe. Oh, Cool Ranch is good. Cool it's ranch. good. Oh, uh, 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 do you guys know in, in, in Europe? Oh, oh boy. Oh, cool Ranch. It. Cool Ranch is original Doritos. Oh, I thought, it was, I thought they called it American. Uh, uh, no, I thought they called it like Chip Royale. <laughs> With cheese. Royale yeah. with ranch. Royale, Royale. Royale. with ranch. ranch. <laughs> uh, what, what? Anybody? Anything else for movie night? We want to add in there. You know. I mean, uh, we need a movie, right? Oh, I would say popcorn. We'll get... Let's is popcorn okay. in this aisle? I mean, we're we're watching yeah, a movie, the, right? Yeah, the microwave's broken though. Okay, we get a pre-pop. We get the big pack of pre-pop. Yeah, yeah pre-pop right. popcorn. Yeah. Who who grabbed that? Who's got that? I do. Uh, cool. All right. Anything else that we want? Anything else? We'll get some sodas and stuff too. Anything else? No, well, I'm getting suspicious now. Do you want anything, Andrew? We I don't think we asked you. If yeah, you I didn't did, get the cool, anything. Cool Ranch, Cool Ranch is cool with me, guys. I mean, I might get some of those like tor the, the tortilla chips that are shaped like a bowl, so you can just put sauce in them. Oh, the scoops, the scoops, yeah, the scoops, scoops like, yeah. brilliant. Good, they took like the, a thousand the years. Bean dip. Oh, yeah. a dip. Yeah, a yeah, dip. Bean dip's good. Bean dip. You look at that, like what? And you open up, and then like, oh, it's so good. Some bean dip. I'm getting that. I'm gonna guacamole. Oh. All right, cool. All right, pushing the card out the store. Doot, doot, doot. Yeah, listen to um, <laughs> hey, the movie night. Scanning stuff. Beep. Delta 8 THC <laughs> chocolate bar. <laughs> Looks <up>. good. <laughs> <laughs> Editorializing from the self checkout line. <laughs> so uh, uh, we, we, we checked out. Now it's time for movie night. Everybody's got their snacks. Yep. Oh, I'm sitting in, getting in. I'm getting, um, all, getting all cozy. I'm turning the lights out or down. Yeah. Hey, uh, question hmm. um uh care to guess who has the snake oh uh, i forgot to tell you there was a snake that crawled its way into one of these items <sighs> oh i'm gonna bet oh it's no not... i was the only one who got the family size <laughs> <laughs> that means if it's so, me uh, it's the biggest snake oh. <laughs> a virginia woman discovered a snake inside a bag of that she got at a grocery store, and apparently what happened is that there was a hole, and maybe like a mouse got inside of there, and the mouse ate the chips, and then a snake got. It wasn't chips though. It was popcorn, Justin. Oh no! Never buy the pre-popped popcorn. Never buy the pre-popped popcorn because you can pop it yourself. So we're Except using this as a, a yeah, yeah. I was gonna say we're. we're, we're... <laughs> I love that you've turned this into a fable about laziness. <laughs> that if, 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 just, if you don't have the gumption to pop your own popcorn, then the asp will haunt you. It's whoever, a, it's a, it's, whoever it's, it's gets the popper madness of... of whoever uh, gets the, the pre-pop popcorn goes, oh, it's so good. It's so much better than like the fresh yeah, popcorn. No yeah, one yeah, says no, that. No, 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 no. The, 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 the aged white cheddar, yeah. New England, the uh, fancy... Mm -hmm, but that's mm -hmm. a different... It's a different product. I mean, it's, it's cold versus hot, right? But the the ones in the bag that that you grabbed are also quote unquote cold popcorn. Yeah, because I was told that we didn't have a microwave. Yeah, we, yeah. So I so and by the way, you're the one who said that. You're the one who suggested it. Ding dong. It was 
movie night. We're gonna have movie night without popcorn. Well, yeah, but no, all of a sudden there's a snake in the in, in, in the bag and it's my popcorn. Where before I was just suggesting we get popcorn <laughs> and you're like, fine, 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 we'll get the cold popcorn. This is our snake. I I, I will take a fifty percent responsibility okay. for bringing a snake to movie night. I'll take you the have snake. to take you have to hold the other half of this L. All right, I'll take the Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from, this is reported by foxnews.com. A Virginia woman's trip to the grocery store took an unexpected turn on Thursday when she was startled by a snake in her shopping cart. Oh. Hello. <laughs> uh, how, how big in? Oh, hold on. We might have to give him a second. For, uh, oh. I wonder, like, like so is there a threshold for which the size of the snake would be, like, adorable? Uh, or, or would you always be startled, even if it was just a little baby snake? Would you be startled and try to step on it? I mean, I know a little little worm snake. That that that's hilarious. You would, yeah, look at you. You'd probably still ask for a uh, a refund on your item, even if it were a tiny snake. Yeah, but I'd also ask to keep the snake, right? You'd want to keep the snake. Well, yeah. Like we always go to the same restaurant on Mondays. Yes. If we went to that restaurant, yes, which we love, yes, and and. No judgment to them, but a snake was on your plate, and it was a small one, so it didn't startle you. You would request to take the snake back here to the studio? Uh, nah, nah, no. No, I, <laughs> I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would bravely throw it away. Just, would you make it? Uh, <laughs> Bra- uh, that sounds, that's actually pretty, that is braver than I would. I would not touch it. I would run away. You would not oh, have really? it in your hands. No, hell no. <laughs> Absolutely not! I would grab the snake. No, thank you. You wouldn't. You wouldn't have a little snake in your in your hands, and then make a little a little uh, wish and give a little oh. kiss, oh. and then and then oh. throw it into but, the but, field. But, but like, have you have you seen a worm snake? They're they're pink. They look like worms, and they got the big eyes. I don't love worm smiles. And uh, I know noted, noted you worm love, aficionado Bryce Castillo. Yeah, I love worms. I love wishes. <laughs> I- I love uh, uh, unhinging my jaw. Worm, worms and Wishes is a young adult uh, coming of age novel. <laughs> Judy Blooms. It's worms very Judy Bloom. <laughs> I mean, so, so uh, uh, okay. What if they say, ah, oh, we have to rehome this snake, but for every day you keep him, uh, you get to eat a free meal on the house. Where? What house? Which house? The, the, the restaurant. International house. No, it better, better, better be international. Know. Yeah, like uh, the same restaurant that we go to, right? Okay. Yeah, just uh, just just show up with the bowl. Oh. And then they would feed you whatever you wanted. Ooh. Like this makes me want to. Is, make- is there is there a restaurant? Is is there a restaurant that you could think of? Is it bad that like Taco it's Bell was my Taco first? Bell. Yes. Sorry, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course it was Taco Bell. It would be Bell. Taco Bell. I'd I'd do Which it in the drive thru like An annual benefit of like two thousand dollars. It would be so little. It, it would, would be <laughs> nothing. <laughs> if you combined every meal you ate at Taco Bell, it would it would probably be about twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, more or less. But I'd have a little snake because then I could keep it in the car. I now, only really need to now present it. Now you want a snake. You'd be okay with the snake before you were scared about the snake. If it meant free TV. <laughs> You've set up a good hypothetical. You have an actual problem. <laughs> uh, Andrew, uh, uh, while you were uh, uh, having technical difficulties, we have created a conundrum where uh, you're eating at your favorite restaurant uh, a snake shows up on your plate, and for whatever reason, the way that the the uh, restaurant wants to make it up to you is to say, "Well, look, we love this snake very much, so we care about it being taken care of. If you just show us that the snake is healthy physically, whenever you come to our restaurant, we will give you free food. Is there a restaurant for which you would be willing to make that bargain?" What do, you, what do you mean? Show that the snake is healthy. So, like you would, yeah, you would, like, you'd, like, you'd, like, you'd, yeah, you'd, you'd bring it in every time yeah. that you wanted to uh, uh, eat there. I have to take care of a snake. Yes, it's like a pasta pass, but you have to feed it. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. in a little gold. Here's bowl. the thing pasta pass. about snakes. Okay, yes. here's the thing about snakes. If you go look at that evolutionary tree and you look at biology, mm-hmm. we're like way, way, way. They, they are they, snakes only look at people as a source of food or source of heat. Anybody right. who tells you, oh, my snake like, no, no, I'm sorry. It is, it's incapable of doing that. You might as well tell me you have ESP and talk to your snake, you know, with your mind. But you, you wouldn't be ventures. in this for love. 
You'd be in this it's for the transactional. For, yeah, yeah, transactional for the food, You'd man. Be there you, for the dollars. No. You you could you could treat him like a prisoner, like like they, they just need to know that that, that the snake's alive, <laughs> like a prisoner. You know the yeah. classic thing that we do with our pets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I, I'm, no, no, there's no, not there's not no, a single no. restaurant. No, what if Your what favorite if the restaurant, restaurant was was Shakey's? Yes, like <laughs> I'm like the first thing goes in my head, my head like my favorite is nobody judge. But Arby's, like I'm a big Arby's fan. I'm yeah. one of those. They got the meats. I'm thinking Arby's. They got the meats. You should yeah, see if they, ha- if I, I they just, can get mouse for, for your little guy. A little, instead of a yeah, pup cup, like, it's like a snake. It's like a snake cup. I'd be like goodbye Arby's. Sorry. Um, <laughs> well, no, this, this would you, know, you you could still pay with money. This is just the ability to get free paying. Arby's. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like they say. No, I, Show up with our mass. Oh, 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 so so you're saying that if you found a snake in an in in an Arby's, let alone near your food, you'd be like, I'm sorry, dude. I'm I'm out. Uh no, I mean, if there was a snake nearby, but I'm mean, you're telling me I gotta take care of a snake or whatever yeah. to get Arby's for, no. Like like I Free have Arby's. I do yeah. think I do things in life to avoid. I work and do things to avoid uncomfortable situations. Yeah. Mm. You know, so like to me it's like things I don't want to do. You and, and, you, like and having, taking taking care of a small little they, snaky, not having on, a not snake on, inside my house. Yeah, not, not, I've held snakes, you know, picked up snakes, whatever. I go, hey, cool. I have a friend. I have a friend who has a uh, get this a snake farm. Oh, and uh, Donald Schultz, who was the supervising producer for my Shark Week special, he actually raises snakes as he uses them to get anti venom. So they're shark, they're snakes that prey on other snakes. Like they'll like eat, they'll eat poisonous snakes and they have in their blood like an anti-venom. So he's got this whole thing and you like, you just see, he'll like, he'll have this big cabinet and it'll be like these drawers and he pulls out a drawer, just a bunch of snakes, just a bunch of snakes, like drawer after drawer filled with snakes. Oh. Which, yeah, imagine being a cat burglar sneaking into that place. Yeah. I've, and we're, and weirdly so, uh, enough, he had a brochure for an Arby's franchise. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I saw a TikTok that was from like a sanctuary, a zoo, or a, a, some sort of animal rescue sanctuary. <laughs> we're just gonna do all of them, aren't we? And they were keeping <laughs> them in like pl- these like plastic cabinets, like you would get from Target. Yeah, just what he had. Your, just yeah, z- 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 yeah. It's uh, it was kind of cool because I guess they don't need a lot of space. They like the dark in some cases. I don't, uh, I don't know what disturbs me more. That sounds a lot more. like you, Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> you feed them Taco I, Bell. Yeah, it doesn't need a lot of space. Enjoys the enjoys the night hours. <laughs> I don't know. It disturbs me more that they're kept like this, or that the snakes might be like totally cool with it. That like, oh yeah, no, my my world is just a little box. It's fine. I cool. mean, how how many times have we heard of just like a gang of snakes living underneath a house, and they seem like they're getting along fine and dandy? Yeah, well, but they they're always, doing they always other sound stuff like there. they're in the middle of 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 you know a uh, 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 ladies' night. Yeah, it's like a snake orgy. Yeah, right. Yeah, but isn't that great? Don't right? snakes that's, that's, like that's orgies? A plus, plus, plus. Well, I mean, have you for? Are for, we being steak puritans? For, are yeah, we, are for, we puritanical? For first night. Maybe. Is it a very boring orgy? And then maybe you know, around uh, like you know, the fourth or fifth day, doesn't doesn't one of you want to go see? Nope. <laughs> And and then all of a sudden it's like oh you're leaving maybe I, not I, though maybe that's what separates us from snakes the only thing maybe. that separates us from snakes <laughs> is 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 the uh, stamina they, they don't want to see a Jordan Peele movie yeah, yeah. Like, no, no. <laughs> could be uh, I'm looking at just Google News and snakes uh, I don't know who Deep is but uh, keep your distance D E E P warns residents to stay away from snakes. Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, we oh, need no, another. No, no, e. no, no, no. Uh, of, 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 of. Ecological? Eels. Uh, eels. 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 Like, like, Department of Eels. Oh, her, her, herps. D, d herps. Derps. D, Department so. of Energy and Environmental Protection is what some people would say it is. Uh, but we all know. Yeah. We know it's eels. Department of Eels. eels. Diamondbacks. Eels. More eels and pythons. There you go. Yep. That's it. <laughs> Got it. The more is silent. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, they say, hey, keep your distance. Stay away from snakes. I would that agree. is a state agency I can get behind. That's good advice. Hey, snakes, 
better off Think better twice. off alone. Yeah. Hey kids. <laughs> DJ Alice says snakes are better off alone. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I know, I know what you're thinking. Snakes are cool and they're they're your best friend. Uh they'll help you buy a Trans Am. Well, don't cut, believe cut the it. video. Brian with a snake whirling it over his head going, woo, woo, <laughs> just like having a good time. <laughs> Continue. That's just a video. For no, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it sure. zooms in on the snake, uh, uh, and the and the snake is smoking a little cigarette, and, and he's like, <laughs> "Yeah, faster." <laughs> 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 he starts making the noise like that noisemaker. Wow, 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 yep. wow. What is the biggest? Uh, let's say not in your room or apartment, but adjacent to it. What is the largest sized pet snake? you could tolerate knowing is there. So if you live in a house, picture the house next door. If you live in an apartment, picture an adjoining apartment. Mm. If you live uh, in, in a dorm room, picture the next dorm room over. Oh, oh just something in, and, in your vicinity. So correct. you don't, it doesn't live with you. Correct. It just lives next you, door to you. Right. And, and yes, picture that kind of guy or girl mm. who has that snake. What, what, how big? How big are you comfy? Pretty big. If it's not my house. Really? Not my snake. I don't know what. So my 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 instinct is much like Bryce. However, we do have tiny little birds. I don't know if snakes eat birds. Yes, yes, they do. Snakes eat birds. They snakes they eat birds. Them. They yeah. love them. Well, yes. if that's the case, then I know that Ashley would probably not want a snake that would be big enough to eat our birds. So, again, a worm snake is is so tiny. Very small. So tiny. There's like a, you could juggle. Although I guess our birds can fly. Well, yeah. that would be that would be a problem for the snake. <laughs> but, uh, They're uh, also in your house, protected by walls yeah, but, and uh, doors. Right, but I'm also show you some nature documentaries. Climb up and where... then they, they jump from trees down onto yeah, birds. Yeah, this this is a domesticated snake we're talking about. This isn't some Here. all oh, pro. Uh, no such yeah, animal. Domesticated snakes, because you know the Assyrians, the famous snake domesticators, which is why we've got all those snake shows of those fancy snake breeds that are so well trained. We're just saying they they don't have a lot of experience chasing birds. Is all we need. We need the I'm Westminster because if you're, if you're showing yeah, me some videos you... of a nature a nature documentary, then these are snakes that kill birds on the reg. This this bobo suburban snake <laughs> that uh, in, in this metaphor, you don't know is uh um, is 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 snake elbow from his snake butthole. Well, even if it's not a pet, right? I mean, as a human, as a human who has a a snake, oh. you would have to exert. I some too would like to make sure everyone it. knows I, I that my points are made as a human. <laughs> to such great YouTube videos as "Gigantic Snake Eats Up Sleeping Baby Birds." <laughs> well, I mean, come on. I mean, it's a gigantic well, hold on. snake. It, it might be a surprise twist at the end. No, Let's find it's, out. It, it says what. Why it is, is it twenty on minutes? Also, I don't, I don't need to see this. That's a lot of baby oh, birds. Oh, good golly! It. No, oh geez, oh. yeah. Wow, they okay. They're gonna they're gonna show a lot of that. Like we, I don't think I can. We're not. I don't. That violates TOS. Yeah. Uh, okay, snake those are eats baby birds. birds, and a king snake is believed to eat in canaries in a woman's home. Well, so that how one, did you, that how did one, get in the that home? monster one horror snake right eats out. parakeet alive. All right, I don't want that one there either. Yeah, I want a smaller it's, snake. It's actually a joke video. It's a, a snake puppet. But so, oh no. So. Well, wouldn't you want a bigger snake? Well, then I don't want a snake puppet neither. Would you want a bigger snake or a smaller snake? Because the smaller snake can get through doors and cracks and mm, all the little bits. bigger snake can wrap around your neck at night and strangle you to death. Not if it can't get under the door. Not if it can't open the Price, door handle. You, you're yeah. thinking it like a okay, big if it's big primate. enough, it literally we have videos. Go ahead, do a YouTube search <laughs> no, for <laughs> large snakes opens door handles. Doors. <laughs> And you have vents and other stuff, and doors get left open. Like your your security protocols, Bryce, frightening. <laughs> okay, I, I, I I'm just... not accepting judgment on my opsec at this time. But <laughs> I okay. So a this is uh, this, this is a seems snake totally opening. Totally safe. Here's Look Bryce's house. You're We're looking at your... video. Of Bryce's oh house. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I. I don't have a, a handle. I have a, door, I, have a, I have a round knob. So oh, I've defeated the snakes because <laughs> you went from I have a door. Well, I have a door knob, <laughs> and it's not like what you expect it to be able to wrap its body around in some sort of articulated way and turn a knob. No, but I don't expect it to pick a lock either. I'm saying yeah. it again. Yeah, 
I, I, I would I would be really impressed if it knew my 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 keypad door code. <laughs> do, 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 with its, its little snake snout. Like <laughs> well, beep, like listen, beep, Bryce beep. Bryce doesn't have a toilet because we know snakes can crawl through toilets, so he's fine. <laughs> well. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, I, you do. I guess I, yeah. Sorry, this is It's a, been a slumdog millionaire, you man. You just gotta be careful. Bryce, Bryce, how many snakes would have to come out of your toilet before you'd be scared? <laughs> this is the one. Oh, okay. One, but not zero. Not zero. Not zero. So the not concept zero. of snakes coming out of your toilet would, yeah, you are, you it's are fu- solid. It, yeah. I, you are, you are, you are Clint Eastwood what? on that. That's a, one write it up in a out of a toilet. I'm wearing diapers for life. Right. The first one. <laughs> The first one. Nothing. I may start now. Now that I think about it, like, why take that chance? If anybody a asks, chance. you just say, uh, well, I'm in the astronaut program. <laughs> That's yeah, just training, your always answer. Not snake related. Not at all. I don't have an unusual phobia of snakes. Totally not that. Astronaut. I like that. Yeah. 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 I'm an astronaut. Not nope. a snake phobic weirdo. <laughs> or, or a gonzo writer for a skateboarding magazine. One or the other. <laughs> uh, uh, well, here. Here's something that doesn't need much writing. Going to the URL www.patreon.com slash weird things. Because with that uh, a little bit of uh, a digital penmanship, you can come to our subscription program for which you can support this very show. Well, what happens when you support this very show? Well, number one, a wave of self-satisfaction washes over you, knowing that you keep this show loud, live, and independent each and every Monday afternoon. Secondly, you get access to our After Things podcast before anybody else. That comes with a, a special RSS feed for which you never need to log into ever, ever, ever again. Friends, patreon.com slash weird things. Walk the true path. So, you know, <laughs> you know who else apparently likes to eat birds? Uh, I don't like this line of conversation, but uh, no, I don't. Uh, me, yeah, chicken. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. I mean, whatever. Yeah, eggs. <laughs> you, now I guess the Riddler's here. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you know where you don't find a lot of birds? Apparently, where space, China. What? Have you heard this? No. No. So, uh, look up like Google like China and birds, and so. <laughs> It starts off with that that crazy crackpot, Mao Zedong, who's like, hey, uh, I'm not a farmer agrarian expert guy, and we're facing some issues here. So we're going to kill all the pests, including like certain kinds of birds, because we don't want them eating our grain. And so they basically dramatically reduced the bird population in China considerably, uh, which apparently birds, who knew, ate bugs that caused disease and so basically created the largest famine we've ever had like 30 to 50 million people dead and also some of them actually targeted whatever we just don't really talk about that a lot but anyhow um after that uh not not a lot of birds and like to this day like you'll see like wild nets to catch birds in sort of wild places because they eat them like i mean like they like eat like even small birds so it's kind of been a cultural thing and you talk to people who go there and it's like yeah you just don't see birds wow so so it's uh, uh kung pao beef shrimp and that's it pork pork more pork okay. than beef yeah more pork, pork than beef okay. yeah. chicken yeah i mean it's really chicken i mean chicken chicken's a big thing but, 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 but we're fish, talking like, just like little like like a fly, blue jay like, like little or, like wild yeah, birds yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like in the morning so you hear ex- you hear tweet 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 out, out, out of your window. Oh, they're tweeting. Yeah, they, they don't hear yeah. that. They don't. They, they don't. They say people talk about like when you go from Hong Kong, which didn't do that, to China. Like the difference is stark. Like in Hong Kong, there's still birds, and when you see like wild birds in China, they're often migratory. So, so wait a minute. So are very, they are they still killing them? Or, or, still eating them? Yeah. Still well, eating, no, 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 it's, no, no. It's, I mean, I mean, I mean, killing killing the 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 migratory birds or anything like that. No, they. I mean, they they will. I mean, they stopped the process of trying to kill them because they realized gotcha. it caused a supreme catastrophe. But you still have people like most of China. Like we don't we don't see China. We see I mean no. amazing cities, incredibly industrious, whatever. But half of China still lives in basically Cuba or lower sort of conditions, and so food is harder, food is scarcer. So you you know you'll eat wild birds. You put nets across stuff. People who like ride motorcycles and stuff will tell you like yeah, just you going through the you know the backwoods there. You're liable to run into nets and stuff and things like this. So. That is still a part of their, and I want to pass judgment because this is this is 
been part of their diet for a long time and, and not a speaking from, you know, some privileged sort of Western sort of perspective. I don't want to be disparaging, but it's it is a point part of the economic catastrophe of what was happened in the 1940s and 50s and 60s in China was this huge ecological collapse of like birds. So like it's just birds are much, much rarer Jesus. there in this day. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That is that is yeah. uh, nuts. That there is still well, a, a massive ecological ramification of that. Yeah, and it's you know we had you know we had a lot of our own versions of that too. You remember like we hunted the buffalo to extinction to starve Native Americans and to force them to move on. And so you look at that 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 is not a uniquely you know Chinese sort of thing. The idea of like one to true this dramatic sort of change to the to the ecosystem yeah. to achieve some political goal. Um, so our our hands are just as you know. Right. Should, should we do like a cultural else's? exchange where we give them some birds and ask if they have any <laughs> buffalo? Yeah. Water yeah. buffalo. I, I, after this segment, I know I will be a single issue voter from here on out. <laughs> we need a bird for buffalo exchange, a bilateral bird for buffalo exchange. B2B. I like to imagine they'll send over just a big mastiff dressed up as a buffalo. Like, oh. <laughs> that'd be cool. That'd, that'd be, be adorable. No, that's the last time I once. ordered a buffalo on Wish. <laughs> we yeah. have buffaloes at home. The buffaloes at home. I mean, if I ordered a buffalo, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to get a buffalo. And then be like, oh, I don't really want. And then I get a mastiff, like, oh, thank God they sent me a mastiff. Well, now, and unlike buffalo that take uh, quite a while to reach full adulthood and maturity, I would think that once you, you know, are in your second decade of whoopsie doodle, we killed all the birds. It wouldn't take that long to reintroduce birds, but I guess I guess I'm wrong. Well, it's not. Again, the problem is it's still part of eating, like part of like a lot of the rural villagers. It's part of the diet. Is just you know, if you find a bird, eat a bird, and so that's the hard part. Is that like the wild nets, poachers, whatnot, are still decimating populations of birds. So it's it's really hard for it to kind of make any kind of comeback because. Well, it's like North Korea. Like they say, like in North Korea, you just don't see any birds, period. Because because they all get need. Yeah, they're gonna eat. Wow. And you find a bird, you eat the bird. And again, this is survival strategy. No, no judgment. Yeah, yeah. Is literally. But from a governance point of view, like yeah, tons of judgment. Very judgment. Extremely okay. judgment. Question, Bryce. Yes. How many birds have to come out of your toilet <laughs> before you get scared? Yeah. Is the number still the same? Is it no. still one? It's two. <laughs> it's a it two would be birds. two. The second time a bird the comes out. The first time is a matter? great story. The first time, I'm telling everyone. I'm putting it on TikTok. I'm going on the Today Show. I'm telling Hoda Kotby about the bird. Yeah. Hoda, there was a bird in my collar. And this bird just came out of my toilet. <laughs> The second time is a problem. Second time is a is a is a trend. But wait, hold on. Would you be uh, scared, okay. or what would the, you just? What or... if the bird was an ostrich? <laughs> oh, the first bird. Well, then I'd sell tickets. Then I would just sell tickets. Oh, <laughs> now you're now you're on now you're on the brushwood like, pivot. Right, <laughs> the, the, the the, yeah, yeah. The, the yeah. hypothetical. Come see the ostrich <laughs> toilet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's no hypothetical situation that Brian doesn't turn into, uh, and then I become a, a sideshow tra- freak. <laughs> traveling road show, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think that you'd be scared on the second bird. I feel like you mm. would You would write a letter to your landlord. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> say, hey. Everyone gets a one. Everyone gets everyone one. Everyone has one bird <laughs> one? Okay. Uh, uh, appear spontaneously All from right. my toilet. How many fish? What type of fish? Uh, little minnows, little, little goldfish. Little That's minnow. fine. As, far, as, they, as long mean, as I, they know I, what I, they're getting into, I know what I'm using that toilet for. What, okay, what if it's them fish that are nibbling at your toesies uh, and, and, they, <laughs> <laughs> and they clean? Oh. <laughs> I thought you meant that they would somehow from the toilet nibble my toes. I think no. no as no, if no, they no, were. That's the no, type. no, no, no. That's the type. Yeah. But, but I think he is. Su- I, I think I think he is suggesting that those little some bitches <laughs> majestically leap, <laughs> so they might nibble upon. <laughs> then, then I'd get a net. I'd get a netting solution. At that point, I that's a that is I, more how than you, how you gonna do your business through a net. 
I, I, if fish are such a problem <laughs> that I need to fix all this, I'll use a net. I'll use the shower. I'll figure it out. But I'm not what? going. The shower. I'm not raw dogging the toilet if there are nibbling fish who can jump out and get my tootsies. Here's, I'm not here, doing that. He just here, 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 a here. shower and a net <laughs> is more acceptable than, all right. Here's than the problem. fish here's, jumping out and biting your tootsies. Here's the problem. You go into the shower, uh -huh. crustaceans. <sighs> They're coming out everywhere. Yeah. It's a menagerie. He's but, a regular Dr. Doolittle. Then, uh, yeah, I'd have to move out at that point. At, at that point, that would be over the limit. So somewhere between zero and that. <laughs> That's got to violate the lease, right? Totally. Oh, I'm getting my security deposit back and then some. No, and then you, re he, and then goes, you read the lease the and front, it's like, oh, no, I have to be. I have Freshwater to, fish, damn it. It's 45 <laughs> days after sight of the first fish. <laughs> He reads the lease and it just says, sir, this is a museum. <laughs> I I found, I was Googling up like birds and you know, the debate in China, other birds nowhere. And then I saw this link, which I thought was a very peculiar top bird-free destinations in 2019. Oh, and thank I'm like, goodness. I'm like, that's a very interesting, that's a very niche audience of where can I go where there will be no birds at all because I just don't want to see any birds and somebody put that together and then and it's like yeah and it's like the bird control group like okay before we click further what what would you suspect bird control group is uh well, well it, I mean there's uh, there's 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 a couple different flavors of this uh, um I would I would I'm going to start the bidding low and I'll say that it is a group for which is sympathetic to people who are phobic toward birds uh, I'm going to go a step farther and say that there's probably, uh, it's not an irrational fear of birds, but perhaps, uh, for example, our beloved grackles here in Austin, uh, not exactly hygienic. Maybe maybe mm -hmm. taking their crusty, disease-covered talons, stomping all over my guac, Ugh. acting like it ain't no big thing. It's movie night, too. Yeah, right? Bryce, uh, what do you think the, ghost, the, 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 the bird control group is? These are probably the government workers who control all the bird drones, right? Because birds aren't Cause real. Birds, birds aren't, aren't real. Yeah. They're a tool for the bourgeoisie. Yeah. yeah. That's my guess. Uh, which I'm beginning to lean more into that theory. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so Bryce, why don't you click on it? Okay, I'm going to go to, we're here at birdcontrolgroup.com. Um, let's see here. Take a, take a little while to load. Bird control group. Effective laser bird deterrence as a, <laughs> What? They're shooting lasers at the birds? So if you have crops or fields and things that you need to be protected uh, from birds, yeah, and they have all kinds of stuff. They have like lasers that scan fields to remove birds, and they have a thing go down there called manual laser bird deterrence. Literally a laser to aim at birds to wow. basically laser. So, so this, would, th 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 this would be a non-lethal way to deter I'd, birds? I'd imagine it'd be easiest, like, uh, if it's AI controlled, you just gotta find how hard can it be to uh, identify bird, <laughs> subheading, identify eyeball of bird, focus laser on eyeball, just get them all blinded up and confused. Here, here They're green lasers, fine. Here's here's like agri-laser handheld, accurately deterred birds from any location. Our handheld lasers are highly effective deterring birds directly you project the laser towards birds they perceive it as a physical threat and flee immediately. Uh, well, that's cool. I I'm, mean, it's I'm for it. Yeah, I, I like. Why does it have a red dot? Okay, the green dot. The green. The, when your laser is a green dot, then I don't know why you need a red dot on it. Well, to aim it and then fire yeah. your green laser. Just fire it as a laser. Yeah, I mean, you might accidentally hit a pilot. Wow. Well, they even laser. tell you like which laser you should get based on how far away your birds are. <laughs> Wait, all right, go get onto our happy customers. I want to see where where they're from. Okay, uh, Maersk, uh, the Air Force of the Netherlands. Wow, Frankfurt Airport. Frankfurt Airport. Uh, yeah. Washington State Parks, a golf course. Wow, these guys are pulling big contracts. Yeah, and that's just yeah, a manual airports. one. You want to see the automatic one? Yeah. The wait, Avix yeah. Autonomic Mark II. Oh, oh wait, 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 no, wait, we're, we're watching it. We're yeah. seeing an entire oh wow a whole swell flock. of birds. That's a crop. Look at that crop. That's crop. a crop. Oh, birds! Oh. Get away! Like we don't. How do we know it's just not some dude yelling? Because they cut. They show the laser and they cut to a bunch of birds flocking away. Like yeah. Okay. 
You can see it I a believe little it. bit. It's like, okay, you know what it is? Is I now understand that birds are anti-cats. So you just, wherever you shine the laser, the birds are like, not there. Nope. <laughs> they have a button you can click to say, solve my bird problem. I want Bryce to call them up and say he's worried about birds falling out of his toilet. <laughs> <laughs> What industry do you operate? Let's see. Bathroom. Bathroom. <laughs> Semi-public space. There you go. <laughs> uh, it's, an, uh, it's an exhibition hall, really. Okay. Damn. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Damn. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Sorry. That was too far. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's revealing. <laughs> Move on. Uh, uh, man. Birds. I kind of want to be a farmer now just for the lasers and drones. Yeah, you want to know what? Uh, I, I will say this: uh, if I if I grew up and and uh, uh, being a farmer was about shooting lasers and running drones, like can, can I, I can, feel like can, I'd be into it. And get, yeah, yeah, taking oh, yeah. out feral hogs. Yep, 30, 50 feral hogs. Thirty to fifty of them. Go click on if you click on the reducing the crop. Uh, there's that they show this. They have an they have an image for Australian horticulture grower reduces bird presence by up to ninety percent. I want you if you can find that image, Bryce. Um, I want you all to look at that because there's something very hysterical about it. Uh, yeah, here. Um, reduce crop loss. Yeah, or, or, click on that. See what it brings up. Uh, let's see. Increase your yield with automated lasers. Yeah, scroll down, scroll down. It'll see like our happy growers. Oh, here we go. Our happy growers. There we go. That image, Australian horticulture growth. Look at that image. What do you notice? Uh, <laughs> they've got uh, they, they've got anti bird technology on the laser so that the birds the, don't stand. The on birds the don't land on the laser and poop on. They it. put the little spikes on the laser. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> and you got you know that wasn't that's an aftermarket fix because somebody was like, "Hey mate, uh, <laughs> <laughs> your birds you are uh, your standing on your bird gun." Yeah. Although that makes me wonder if like uh, uh, how would how would you feel uh, in L.A. They have those spikes everywhere. How would you feel if instead of those seeing those spikes everywhere, you just saw, you know, a bunch of uh, little targeted, you know, do 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 bow, 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 laser uh, some Star Wars. I'm sorry. Wait, I, I'm not familiar with that model. Can you just repeat that model? Oh, man. That, it's just uh, do 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 do. Oh yeah, no, yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan. No, no. Oh. The first one you said, I thought I might have been into, but but the second one, no, too oh, yeah, far. I, I phoned it in. Too far. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just not a big fan of that model per se. Uh, 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 I would, I think that'd be great. I mean, uh, uh, I don't know if like, you know, in in a area like like an airport or or a train station or something like that, where birds flock because they know that there's going to be food left on the ground, that there's any amount of lasers that could stop them from from coming in. You need a lot of lasers. It would have to look like uh like like entrapment with Catherine Zeta Jones. It would be great is if they're like infrared or or ultraviolet or something. So the experience to everybody at Disney World is that they're just hanging around and occasionally a bird bursts into flame oh, next no. to next to them, but they never have to see the laser. <laughs> so they're just exploding birds then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's the most bird explodiest place in the world. <laughs> somebody uh, somebody goes to propose in, in, in a photogenic spot, is holding out this hand, and all of a sudden goes, ah! <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now we're looking at a video of them installing. Oh, it's got a solar panel. And so he's got the handheld one here, and... He's throwing it up in a like a where like a warehouse or a yeah open where, air. where where a bunch of birds are are up on a roost and so uh, according to this video which is designed to sell this equipment <laughs> it looks <laughs> it looks pretty effective huh what other what other animals should we be scaring with lasers well let's just make a list of the ones we shouldn't I mean yeah. all of them it's just should be on the list of why not. Dressage horses, but, can't trust them. Oh yeah, do, 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 do. No. just get it right in the eye. <laughs> Quarterbacks, <laughs> hey, get out, get out of there, get out of that end zone. Hey, teenagers hey, in front hey. of convenience stores hanging out. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I'll do that with, um, uh, or not a laser, but if I have like a, because I get wasps sometimes out in my, on my patio. And if the sun is out, I'll use my phone to shine the light at it to scare it away. And it works. Uh, Wait, hold on. So would you want a little laser gun to, to shoot at wasps? Yeah, if it worked, I would absolutely go for it. Because I, I buy Guys, a lot Can of- you Google, do lasers scare wasps? I do lasers scare wasps. Zap their eyes. Um, let's see here. How powerful a laser would you need to kill an insect? That's not what I want. I just want to scare it. I just want to get it out of here. Hmm. Uh, it's pretty scary. Maybe you do want to step up, though. Step up to the wasp burning. Get game. to some microwaves instead of lasers. Really, just what if Taco Bell put a laser to scare you from getting into the drive-through? They would lose two to three thousand dollars a year <laughs> <laughs> in revenue. <laughs> I'd go to another Taco Bell. There's like three of them. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I I'm not gonna name names, but it was in Vegas. Hmm. Went to go see a show of a magician. Yeah. Say a very successful magician. Mm-hmm. And then got to go to see a tour of said magician's amazing, amazing. You're, magic if you were, if you were to describe this magician uh, uh, like a metal, like a, <laughs> would it be like don't, steel? Don't know where that's going. Or, or not going there. So, so favorite <laughs> thing is after the show, invites a few people, we get to go see this museum and walk around the museum. Mm-hmm. And then I turn around and I see one of his assistants has brought him food and he's. Eating a Taco Bell burrito and could not have been more my hero. Could not have been more my hero in that moment. I was just, just you know, see the show, see the museum, and watch it. Just chow down on burrito from Taco Bell, and I'm like, this person has is a billionaire, could do anything they wanted. Yeah. And his thing is like, I want some Taco Bell, and I'm like, if I just, I looked at her. I, I, I will, I will never oh. forget the time that, that that Andrew and I were were told that a, a magician who may or may not be the same person, uh, uh regularly took the 777 flight from Las Vegas to Fort Lauderdale on Spirit Airlines so they could then oh. connect. Here's to, the to, secret to, 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 to find to, Spirit. Yeah. We, we we flew Spirit. No, yeah. we flew JSX, but like we flew Spirit to Florida and but you buy, you pay for the big front seat because it's like it's the cheapest quote first class ticket you can get for international it's like it's like ah well if you want to fly in our bigger comfier seat that's an extra 40 dollars you know it's like maybe 200 or whatever you like like yeah okay cool and then you sit up there and you feel like a king because you at least have the best seat on the plane that's the key the flying spirit and also the it's anger that is building behind you is propelling the plane even faster <laughs> and so you can yeah, feel exactly. you can feel the hatred and power uh, uh at at your at your back by the way r.i.p spirit airlines bought by jet blue a couple days ago yeah so. i uh, but this person before yeah before he had his private jet would fly that flight but uh it just made yeah, it I, made, made me made me so happy it also it just yeah. considering what his final destination was i'm just like salute that's how you get there that's how you do it. Yeah, I, I, uh, I like JetBlue. Like JetBlue, like I'll fly JetBlue if I can get the extended extra leg room there. I'll take that over like business class in some planes because they got the snack thing. Like the JetBlue's got just come up and grab snacks mm-hmm. like any time. Hmm. It's like you just walk. Oh, I'm gonna get some chips. Like yeah, go for it. It's chips. It's fine. It's cool. <laughs> chips. Yeah. I'm gonna grab a soda. Like yeah, it's yeah. cool. It's it's for I'm you. Like, you paid like some for this. popcorn. I'm sorry, we don't have a microwave. Don't worry, we have family size of pre-popped popcorn. Mm-hmm. Oh good. I well, hope there's well, no snakes in there. Uh, uh yes, Samuel Mr. Jackson. Mr. L. Jackson. Is- <laughs> no good. No, yeah. Thank you very much. Ah! Oh no! There was a snake on the dang chip. He doesn't know. He calls popcorn kernels chips. That was that was the asylum version of snakes on a plane. <laughs> There's a snake on the, on the dang chip. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do picks. <laughs> a snake on the dang chip. <laughs> he doesn't know. He doesn't, he doesn't. call them kernels. No. Oh. Uh, I had a lot of time to watch things mm. on uh, on these flights. So, uh, look, ain't nobody talked about this more than Brian and our friend Meryl, but I am now a season and a half into the HBO Max original Harley Quinn. 
and uh, it is it is it is very funny. It is worth your time. Uh, uh, certainly in in the vein of uh, uh, Rick and Morty, uh, in its kind of like meta commentary and adult humor, uh, uh, while trying to to keep the banter fairly realistic, uh, with the patina of superheroes as opposed to science fiction. Uh, but I have uh, I've 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 enjoyed it. Nice. Uh, there there are two seasons, three seasons. The third just debuted. So uh, if you uh, you've got three seasons uh, to enjoy, if you start it whenever you start it, uh, I haven't started uh, season three, but all of the advertisements for season three are it's us, the couple you didn't see coming, and everything is totally great, which tells me that will probably last one episode. <laughs> great. Mm. Yeah, I uh, I've. Uh, without without getting into spoilers, we can't really get into spoilers. But uh, uh, I I I have enjoyed everything uh, uh, thus far, and uh, I'm I'm pumped to see where it goes. Uh, I got to pick. Uh, yep. You know what's what's really good and is almost over is uh, one better call Saul. Hey, that show uh, is great. Uh, just in case anyone didn't know, it's almost done. There was only a few more episodes left. And uh, we're getting some answers. We're getting to the end. Are they gonna? They're. I think. Are they gonna call Saul by I, the end? I think they'll. I think they'll call him at the end. Someone Saul's gonna get called. Uh, this this week, there is a turn, a very good turn, a very interesting turn. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm gonna say. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I went back and watched that episode a second time just to make sure that I could drink in just how correct my prediction was. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> I had some correct predictions too, I think. Well, cash okay. those in at the at the prediction bank, boys. <laughs> you get having, one snake a piece. <laughs> and complimentary popcorn. It, Another snake. Having, having not made it through the first season, not because I didn't enjoy, I thought it was fantastic, but I think maybe I got in the second season. But uh the fact that you have a show that's a prequel that sets up one of the most successful shows of all time, that you could still have predictions, that you could still have suspense about what's going to happen and have the idea that maybe it'll turn out differently. It's kind of really awesome. You know, it's the kind of storytelling that makes you very frustrated when there are other gigantic intellectual property libraries for which uh, the prequels are really boring and bad and, and just kind of there to show you the fact that they can rebuild a set that you might have seen once. Mm. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't know when I wouldn't know anything about that, but that does sound like a bad. Doesn't better, sound like a good. I call stars. Yes. Better call stars. <laughs> 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 We're out of epics. We better call stars. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I did. Uh, I did finish up my read. Uh, I think. Uh, you guys were out of town, but I mentioned that uh, I reread uh, Christopher Moore's Lamb, uh, which is. The uh, the the gospel according to Christ's childhood friend Biff. Uh, it's great. It's um, silly, uh, uh, loving, and uh, fun and wild. Uh, he learns uh, Christ uh, learns kung fu. He becomes an expert in Buddhist meditations. Hmm. He uh, travels all over the world. Uh, it's uh, it's great. That sounds fun. Is it like uh, uh, is it lighthearted? Is it um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, I mean, I uh, it, it, it covers pretty not, jolly. But. Not a store, not a spoiler, but the opening scene is they're in like a, I don't know, like a double tree hotel or whatever, and as if it's the billionth chore he has to do it today. Some uh, uh, angels like, all right, fine, I resurrected him. Look, you have to, uh, you have the gift of all languages. Here's some uh, paper. Will you just write a gospel? And uh, and so uh, uh, and along the way, he's uh, uh, trying to figure out, like, well, what did, what do other people think happens? And so he discovers like uh, one of those given by the Gideon books and tries uh. to hide it and find out, you know, it's like, well, what? This isn't right. It's 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 adorable. I liked it a lot. Nice. Andrew. So my pick, I'm going to give you two picks because it's my privilege. Uh, one is I've been watching, I don't know how I found this channel, but that's where my whole China bird thing, ADV China on YouTube. And imagine this guys, what if we got motorcycles? Yeah. We got a comm system uh-huh. to talk to each other 
and recorded our podcast as we drove around on our motorcycles and had videos, cameras to just videotape everything we saw. Uh, that sounds awesome. However, what we're looking at appears to be two dudes in front of a green screen going the wrong way. Well, the, you're, you're looking at a very recent video of them oh. after they got kicked out of China. Oh, talking okay. About oh, their right. oh, I see. Uh, <laughs> so, wait. yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 in the one sample that I've seen, <laughs> I declared this completely useless out of the 500 videos they've done. So this is more like what you see is when they, they, they basically go on motorcycles and explore China or the rural parts of China. They've done, they're in the process of making a document. They've made like two documentaries conquering Southern China and conquering Northern China where they don't ask permission. They just drove around there. They're, you know, they've lived in China for years, but they're Westerners kind of having this very, very interesting sort of experience of them talking about it. They show like some of the kind of the ghost cities there of oh. like, and they show like, they show this building that's falling apart and like you see tiles falling off all this. And they're like, hey, how old would you say this building is? And they're like, yeah, we were here four years ago when this was being built. Oh wow. my God. So there's a lot of beautiful things about China. They talk to a lot of like, they'll go to the rural places and talk to somebody, it's just the nicest person in the world. And just there's just so much of it just showing you the side of China you don't normally sort of see and just like how hospitable the people are and just. Like, I love China. Like, I've been to China. I love China. Not a fan of the CCP, CCP, the, the Chinese Central Party. The people, the countryside, love that. So, yeah. Um, far be it for me to make such a big statement there. I'm not a fan of, fan of you know, a totalitarian regime. Sure. I'm sure there are great people there in it, too. But anyhow. Um, it's a billion So, it's, it's a, a neat thing. People. So there's got to be a bunch billion of point three, yeah. Like, yeah, it's insane. Yeah. So, but anyhow, it's just a neat, because if you want to see, uh, see more about China and sort of see it in through the point of view of something not filtered by the Chinese government, they also talk, they have an episode where they talk about like, yeah, this BBC documentary, Wild China, like we happen to go to the same place where they did there in the, in the, the BBC documentary, they show these people in the morning going out there and digging up clams from the mud. And they said, yeah, we asked the, the kind of the town leader about this. He says, yeah, I can arrange that if you want, but we don't do that. We just we just paid them to do that for the BBC talking. Oh, my God. Wow. So they are they just, are very much committed to this kind of guerrilla uh, uh, filmmaking. And, and that, that's such a great idea to release it as, as, a, as a YouTube series. Yeah. And they're, they they love they love China, love Chinese people. They're both married to Chinese wives. So it's it's not a, if I sound like I'm very neg I don't. I mean, it's literally. China is this amazing, huge country filled with a billion point. So wait, did they, they got, they got chased out for real? Like, are they like out of China? Eventually. Yeah. I think eventually they got asked to leave. I got, I don't know the details on that, but they're showing this, like, this is a city that's like one of these, like completely sort of, they they were just driving along. Like what's this over here? And they pull up there and it's some other city that was constructed, including this big, huge uh, circular sculpture, which is a beautiful sculpture. It's a big steel sculpture. And it, and they they go a little further on, and you see entire blocks are just blockaded off because they just halted, per, you know, they halted product, you know, uh, construction. Wow. So. Wow. These are this is amazing, and these are like this is real life. This is not like a movie set or anything. This is just like an just a ghost, a ghost, ghost town. town. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So a- ADV China uh, again. I've been watching their videos and just find it really, really interesting just to see that. And it's just, they just, in two guys driving around motorcycles, talking back and forth. And then over here's this. So I think that'll be our new format going forward. Yeah. yeah. So my, my other pick is, I think I may have talked about this before. I know I talked with you, Bryce, a little bit about it, but uh, I, there's not a lot of great science fiction. I mean, there's more now than there was before, but sometimes finding shows I really like is hard. And sometimes I'll watch a thing. I'm not really be into it, but I might think like maybe there's more there and maybe I should kind of go back and revisit it. And I did that with Westworld because I, the season four started, I watched the first two episodes of Westworld season three. I was really season one. I've, I've had, I've always had this sort of conflicted relation with it. Some things I like, some things I go, why do they do that? Whatever. I thought, why don't I go back and rewatch Westworld and just sort of just, knowing that the problem we had with season one i had was you didn't know the world they were in we didn't understand what the outside world and the writers understood it and so you're asking questions like oh is this all real or what's the state of things or whatever where do people come from and to me that kind of that that was too much mystery i I, i'm not but i do find that the idea of the story structure of having the going forwards and backwards made sense with the robots not so much with the man in black but it was fine but like anyhow I went back to go rewatch it 
and rewatch and try to work my way through. And I would say I came away kind of appreciating a lot more of what they were doing about that. Uh, so season one, I actually enjoyed a lot more going through like, I watched it originally, then I tried to watch it, and I just went back and just finished season one and liked it, and I'm almost through season two. And so I'd say that I've, I'm beginning to appreciate the story they're trying to tell. Yeah. It, that might also be one of those binge things, right? Where, where yeah. When, oh, yeah. when you're waiting a week, and and I think there's a natural inclination, especially when you're you're used to kind of breaking down story structure or assuming or guessing or wondering where things are going to go, and when you have that week in the middle, you're like, like, oh, there's a million places your mind can go that uh, don't exist when it's like next episode in five, four, three, two, bada bang, and now you're just kind of rolling along because, mm -hmm. and yeah, you have a, a oh well, and like even, even uh, we were we're watching them week by week for spoiler in time, uh, Tom and I are, and uh, it uh, I have found a lot. I found it's very helpful to watch the episodes twice, mostly just because uh, they all have, especially lately, they've got good enough arcs where there's something at the end that changes some of the ideas that maybe happened at the beginning. Um, and it just makes it easier to follow because there, they, it does, there's, it is trying to do a lot of things and it's got these characters that have these multi-season histories. Um, and, and so, uh, yeah, I think even just watching it a second time probably helps. I, I, I would like to go back and, uh, watch those first seasons again because they're probably good when you know where they're going. And I did in season one, there's the mention of the book, The Bicameral Mind, which is something that sort of plays into the storyline. So I actually went off to start reading the book and I'm like, oh, this is actually kind of a really cool, you know, the the the, the concept of that, which we could probably de dive deeper into another episode, which we should, but is that the idea of consciousness that our 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 inner voice that we recognize it as our own voice is may be actually extremely recent. Something that may have happened between the writing of the Iliad and the Odyssey. Oh, wow. Prior to that, that because if you read the Iliad and quote, according to, to Julian James, the guy that wrote this again, it's, it's a book that I think is interesting in reading. You have to under, he's makes a lot of speculations about things that probably may have other simpler explanations. It was a very interesting idea, but his argument was in the Iliad, People don't have inner thoughts. They have, I felt, you know, they do things because of their loins or their heart or whatever. Everything else is this physical sort of thing. And then he describes how your friend might be actually Apollo guiding your friend to do one thing, but doing something completely contradictory the next. Gods don't really have morality. And he makes a very interesting case that because we, if you look at baboons, like a baboon doesn't go off by himself to go get a drink of water. He waits for the whole group of baboons. And the same with most primates. Primates function as whole units. They don't have individuality like we do in the sense that it's not like, hey, guys, I'm, I'm not really into this whole primate uh, little tribe thing. I'm going to go off and go do my own thing. It just doesn't happen. Humans, wildly more variable. But his argument sort of stems from the idea that as we evolved language, that we perhaps our subconscious is a way to control us and get us to do things we needed to do that were sort of in support of, of that group behavior is that, you know, you might be, maybe you have to operate a net upstream and you need this voice to tell you, like, don't wander off, keep fishing. And you might hear that as the chieftain's voice or the head, you know, the alpha, whatever, telling you, stay here, don't leave, keep here. And so it's a very interesting thing. And that's, you know, Westworld sort of deals with that, like, because they hear the voices and that's sort of the idea of the, th the premise that Jonathan and Lisa Joy were going towards was, you know, the idea of the, the realization that, you break down the bicameral mind and you have the emergence of consciousness when you realize like, oh, that's my voice or this is me guiding this. And that's because you have these robots guided by these voices telling them to do things. And so yeah. it was sort of neat to sort of read it and kind of get deeper into that. Nice. Cool. So, there you go. Yeah. It's been weird. Very nice. All righty. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take a short break. And be back for some after things. Yeah. Just a moment. Uh, so if you need to go take a bathroom break, freshen your drink, whatever, now's the time to do it. Cool. BRB. Oh, my goodness. It's the transcontinental man himself, Justin Robert Young. Yeah, man, that's me. Welcome back. Dude, it's good to be back. Glad to have good to be back here in America. Yeah. What age, when, when did you get back? On uh, Saturday. A Saturday. Oh, okay. Wow. Left on a Saturday morning. At, actually, no, Saturday at 12.50, uh, uh, Amsterdam time, and uh, got here to Austin, Texas at 
five o'clock Saturday. So uh, really, eight. it was only a four-hour flight. <laughs> <laughs> was wait, uh, was that five? Uh, I missed it. Five a.m. or five p.m. P.m. Yeah. Okay. Jeez, I. Uh, ugh, yeah. Um, but that means that jet lag wise, the only real problem is that I have an urge to wake up at like three o'clock in the morning. Um, but if I'm if I'm if I'm on my shit and uh, uh, tired enough, there's no going to bed early. Like I got oh, yeah? I got to stay up a little bit later to make sure that I'm like tired enough at the point that my body's like time to wake up. And oh, you're yeah. like you know. Yeah, we go down because uh, if you try to go to sleep and you're just you're not going to go to sleep, you're just awake. It's it's tor it's it's really tough uh, to just sit for in some, bed. For some people, yeah, if you are a light sleeper, then then jet lag can really be a son of a bitch. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, did, did, was there much? There's not much time difference within Europe, right? When going between countries for you? Uh, Amsterdam was an hour ahead of London. Gotcha. As was most of uh, Germany and all that. Yeah. Um, but uh, did, uh, did uh, who'd you get to see? Did you get to see any friends? Well, yeah, we saw a friend of the show, Will Harris, nice. in London, in his natural environ. <laughs> He took me to a restaurant in a hotel that back when he was uh, uh, with a major publishing house, I don't know <laughs> if I should even say this, he was at a, a major publishing house. The deal he struck for budgetary purposes because of how he would list his expenses uh, was that he would just get a bill from the, from the restaurant at the end of the month. Oh, oh it's just a tab. So basically, it would it would appear as one big food expense <laughs> and not several food expenses. Yeah, uh, which gave him the ability to just sit down with clients or or coworkers. They'd eat a ridiculous meal and uh, then uh, say know. like, "Okay, guys, let's leave." And they'd be, like, "But what about?" And he goes, "Ah, no, hurry." <laughs> uh, but it also made him a god there, so it was very nice. Who to, is this? Uh, uh, our, our my friend our friend uh, Will Harris. Will Harris. Ah uh, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, so yeah, everybody knew him, and they were all very excited to see him, and and it was and that was a good time. And then of course in Berlin, the only show that I that I continued doing during the uh, during the time that I was in Europe was We're Not Wrong, the new political roundtable show, and that's because both of my co-hosts on there, uh, uh, Jen Briney and Andrew Heaton. We're both totally randomly going to be in Europe. And so we decided to do a live recording in Berlin. And we had uh, a great little turnout in a dank Berlin basement uh, for, for, for We're Not Wrong, including a dude whose girlfriend he brought that was from uh, southern Ukraine and oh, gave wow. us gave us all sorts of crazy uh, insights. Yes, because she just had gone back to go visit her family. Wow. And uh, uh, she was like, yeah, it took me 48 hours to get from Berlin to where she normally, where, where she, where she's from in Ukraine, where it would normally take, you know, three hours, four hours. Something. Yeah. Jesus. Wow. But, uh, yeah. It had to be like, it was like a plane to a bus, to another bus, to another train. To a skiff, to a rowboat. Basically. To a, yeah. To yeah. an ice flow that was going the right way. But no, as it turns out, there are no, no direct flights uh, into uh, a country that is uh, currently, yeah, being currently being invaded. Yeah. Wow. But, uh, uh, but wow, yeah. that sounds like a blast. Uh, it was, it was good. It was good. Yeah. And then a bunch of other, a uh, bunch of other uh, random people. Uh, at How, TwitchCon. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. How was it being on like a long vacation? I mean, a, a month is, you know, a week is a good vacation, but a month is pretty long. I don't like it. It was long. It's I'm not. Long. I'm not a fan. Yeah. I hit the wall at two weeks. At that point, it's like if if you know, if I could just be back, I would. I would like to. I just like to be in my own bed right now. Yeah, I, I don't know. I also just have a, a relationship. A, a very. If it weren't for Ashley, I wouldn't take vacations. Mm. Like I don't. Because you. Them. I mean, you guys kind of built that around TwitchCon this vacation. Yes, she. She is the one that is mm. is saying we should do this, yeah. and I enjoy it, and I, and I know it's probably good for me, but but it is very I, good for you. Uh, uh, but I, also, I I don't I don't like. 
I'm at the point where like um, if I can't fly on a private jet, do I really need to be there? <laughs> Not that I get that option. I'm just saying yeah. that you know I, yeah. I I I like that's my it's like wishing eh, like I mean, wishing high, shooting for the stars. I know I have uh for the yeah I, I I like JSX like yeah. show up 30 minutes before yeah that's easy that that I'll do that's fine because that's, cool. that's like. Yeah, you know, that's easy. But the other kind of travel, we had to do a little bit of that. I just, I yeah, I just, I don't know, like yeah, because you you've been you've been ping ponging around the country recently, uh, with with some of your uh, uh, uh international visitors, right? Yeah, my mother in law's in town, so we've been you know just driving, you know, we've been traveling, and it's it's not that the worst experience, but you just kind of go when you're when you have so many things that you can do, kind of at home. You know, yeah. And you're like, you just sort of like, man, you know, I could, I could go travel or I could stay here and do all the cool things I want to do here. Absolutely. That was, that was one of the things that I, I had a complicated relationship with was that I like what I do. So it's like when I'm not doing it, it, it it's like, oh, there's a piece of you missing. <laughs> yeah. I literally wound up editing like a, like a, a montage of stuff like just randomly like actually like was a vlog like, thing no it was like a, an intro i don't even know if i'm going to use it for, for px3 but it oh. was like um it's actually a funny story as to how it came about but uh we were just talking and and i was like oh i just want to do this i just like doing this this is a fun thing to do and then i'm like then i feel guilty it's like oh wait is this bad am i am i ruining my vacation should i not be doing that but I did actually get a lot done. I, I got I got some writing done, and and it was it was good for kind of meta reframing of like, okay, well, we should do this, we should not do this. Blah, blah, blah. Nice. Set set some goals and intentions and stuff like that. But uh, and and like I don't know, especially when you're on a vacation that long, if you work a little bit, that's fine. You're the whole thing of vacation is getting a new perspective, getting a new chance to unwind and change. What your what your time is for a certain amount of time, and that means you get to look at stuff, high, either higher concept or a little more elective. You know, yeah, That's it, you know, it happens. What else are you gonna do in Europe? Not like they got good food. <laughs> I got look. I got thoughts on the food. It's it's. You sent me some some. I I I loved seeing the journey of of. Food. Oh, I noticed the thing, and I knew that Bryce would be the only person to, to uh, uh who would appreciate it the most but i'm walking by a subway in london and these lunatics at subway uh, in england yeah the subway foot five dollar foot long yeah $5. eat fresh right yeah. like they have a sticker on their window where they're selling the following three products a bowl of meatballs uh Doritos nachos <laughs> and then something else. I forget what. Hold it, on, wait. Let me see. I have was it like I a have chicken it. nugget or something. It was some yeah, weird did, like Did you ever have a chip ever have a chip buddy when you're there? A chip buddy? No. Chip buddy is? Is that a no. chip buddy? Is that a bird trying to get chips? <laughs> it's just <laughs> Buddy attack. <laughs> <laughs> It's chip. Oh no, green lasers. Run. B chip B U T T Y. Oh, chip butty. I see. A, th yeah. a sandwich with chips, deep fried potatoes commonly. Oh, I do this. I put french fries in my sammies. Oh. Just that. Just a sandwich of french fries. It's a french fry sandwich. Damn. Uh, all good. right, here it goes. Uh, uh, it's a nacho chicken bite, <laughs> uh, a bowl of meatballs, <laughs> and flaming hot Doritos nachos. Uh, all at Subway for only a uh, uh, one pound ninety nine p. That's a lot. That's a lot for. Wait, uh, are are pounds like less than dollars now? No, pounds are still uh, well above dollars. I but, think, but, but like euros, euros are, are parity. Euros yeah. are parity, <clears throat> which they had, they had never been uh, before. But yeah, check check that Europe that that euro man. Europe one euro is one point. Or one point zero three dollars. Yeah, baby. <laughs> there was, I'm, I'm just gonna say it. that Chip Buddy strikes me as something that happened when Mom forgot ground beef. <laughs> it adds a heft. It adds a heft without. Okay. Bryce, you, you ever? Bread. You ever? Just bread. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever had a, a Permani Brothers sandwich? 
I've heard, oh, I've heard about it because I've I've heard of those. Those are the sandwiches where they put fries in them yeah. as well. Yeah, and coleslaw. Ooh, okay. but like not a creamy That's coleslaw, good. more like a cabbagey coleslaw. Ooh, okay, just a slaw. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I'll be down for that. Uh, right. uh, good stuff. You guys want to do some after things? Yeah, well, 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 you want to know what the hell? Hey, we what can say whatever the hell we want. So long as it doesn't violate the terms of Sahervis. <laughs> All right, Andrew, I will count I, you. Oh, yeah, what's up? Yep, cool. I got a starty thing to tell you about. Oh, perfect. All right, I'll count you in. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to After Things. I'm Intermean, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Well, hello. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Thank you, Andrew. So... I have a friend who is a magician, actually had a background in computer science and very accomplished magician, very, very good, technically very good performer, very good thinker. And a little over, uh, over a year ago, we talked about kind of goals and magic. We had a lot of conversations on goals and magic. And he had said that uh, he, he was into the idea of, magic competitions of doing magic competitions and i've never been personally like a big fan of like the magic competition thing because as a professional that wanted to go out and work on the real world like the the pathway to that really magic competition was fine to maybe help you get your act in a good shape for something for certain things but you know david copperfield doug hitting Siegfried and roy that's not the path that they ever took was to try to do magic competitions and magic competitions are a lot like kind of like it's to me it's it's kind of like uh there to performing professionally what figure skating is to being a professional hockey player those skills can help you a lot and you could probably be good but it's very different yeah so he was very much wanted to do this he actually went and did uh he went and performed on Penn and teller fool us he didn't did fool him but he got really good compliments about what his act because he was very clever and then he had a thing that he wanted to develop. And he was really, really, really serious, extremely serious like this, like like psychotic levels of serious how he approached it. And I'm kind of like, cool, like if that's the thing you want, but it's always hard to understand other people's motivations. And he told me a little bit about what he was working on. And it was an area that I've been interested in. It was kind of cool. And so he worked on his act and worked on it and worked on it and worked on it and worked on it. And it, it was part of what I began to understand for him was that he'd spent years in magic, you know, decades in magic, and he wanted to be able to kind of say, hey, this is my, this is sort of the capstone. This is what I've done. This is kind of where I got to. And I kind of overlooked the fact like that's what I got out of like my TV shows. Like I got to point, I got a TV show and I'm like, cool, done. Cool. I've, I've done, I've kind of got the payback out of magic that I wanted and the recognition or whatever they wanted from it. And I'm ready to try other things. And it's hard to tell somebody else to say, oh, you don't want the thing that you already have. And yeah, this person simon uh was very very dedicated on this and to the point that like his his life centered around this but very intelligent very methodical how he approached things long story short this weekend simon won the fism uh grand prix close-up championship wow which is which is, which is that that's that's it that that is that is the the, the, the Olympics highest of yeah. magic yeah 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 and, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm emotional for this. Just talk about my friend watching how hard he worked at this. And so it was, you know, he spent several years, you know, years trying to get to the point where he felt confident where it was going to be. And to go into this is an international competition, are the best, you know, and people around the world trying to do there. And then they have they have like eight different categories and all these different categories. And so Simon, you know, won for close up. And then they give this special award if they think that you've done he did a miracle, and I won't describe it. He does a thing, and he leaves an impossible object that literally he creates the impossible object, and people think that he's going to take it away and hide it. An impossible object, somebody should have He hands it out to the judges and walks away. They spent the 200 people crowded around to see the thing that he left behind, and he planned that. He knew what he wanted to do, how he wanted to architect that, to the point that the performers got to go on, but the crowd is still in over, awe and over staring at this it. thing wow. that he's created. And just, just because he created a miracle and could walk out of the room and the miracle was still there and people were studying this. And That's so amazing. I, 
I wish I could tell you that I'm like, Simon, you could do this. And I was the voice of constant encouragement to him. I was not. I wasn't discouraging him. But I'm like, eh, eh. But then when I saw this, and I we, we I got to hang out with him in the Magic Castle last night and talk about it. He made a joke. He said, yeah, a friend of mine, because like if you went to Simon's apartment, he literally lives across the street from the Magic Castle. You would find boxes and bins of books and materials and all the sort of stuff that he was working on it, like a psychopath. And he said, yeah, I talked to a friend of mine. He said, you know, somebody said joke, like, I wouldn't be surprised if I went into your apartment now and it was completely clean. And there was just nothing of that there. <laughs> and because Simon's like, he's like, yeah, I like it's like, yeah, I did it. I did the thing I set out to do. I proved it. I did it. And so, you know, maybe it could lead into something. But one, uh, Simon Cornell, uh, you look him up he, again. Maybe we should have him talk because it just it, it, his whole experience of this. He planned the thing out kind of like a heist. He sort of said, like, you know, this is how I'm going to do this. This is how I'm going to pull this off. This is what I'm going to do. And it's going to end with me getting that trophy. So uh, just and it's neat, too. Like, you don't to to me to get much enjoyment out of my friend's thing tells you how wonderful that thing must be. So. Uh, so so is this is something that that, you know, FISM certainly means a lot in the world of magic. Uh, uh, is is this something for which he is like like w when you did the TV show, your interest in magic kind of waned? Is that kind of the sense for for him now? Or well, yeah, we'll see. And you saw that was like that was the uh, the pre qualifying. Like to get to FISM, he had he had to win the North American Championship and go all the way up. Uh, and also our friend of ours, you know, Shudagawa, Shudagawa mm -hmm. won for was the best uh, parlor magician, won for best parlor magic. Oh so, wow. But Simon got the Grand Prix for close up, which was really just amazing. But shoot also showed up and, and won best for that. But for the Grand Prix, Grand Prix, like we said, like to win that for the FISM competition is just it's only every couple of years. It is just an exp it is. Yeah, it's like the Olympic level, whatever. Uh, so your question again was, do you think that this? Yeah has has lowered his his interest in 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 magic in general or, or was fism its own little uh uh not little but but its own massive goal beyond whether or not he wants to take that uh experience and and do more magic stuff yeah i think it'd be it'd be great to probably talk to him because like he he i think he's still processing this mm -hmm. and i don't want to embarrass him but like his for his acceptance speech he just cried <laughs> yeah so it was just you know, understandable. Wow. And so like, I think it's hard to sort of figure out he, he, by the way, my buddy, Jordan gold, they're the ones that did the magic puzzle, mm. which was, they teamed up with the, uh, the guys behind cards against humanity and exploding kittens. And they made that, that the, the most successful magic puzzle, the most successful puzzle Kickstarter ever, you know, over like $4 million raised. And so he had that hit with Jordan and, you know, that team delivering a great product. And I think for this, it is sort of, there is that sort of epiphany where you kind of go like, if you're, it's I don't know, smart. I don't mean smart and intellectual because those things can be very different. But if you're smart, observe it, and you have a good feedback loop and you're self aware, you there's a point at which you go, "Holy crap! I could do a lot more or a lot more bigger things than I realized that I thought before." And and I think he's going through that kind of appreciation because he's got a background in computer science. He's an extremely smart guy. I kept yelling, "I'm like, just give up magic, go into AI, get into AI, go into there." But he needed to follow his own path. Yeah. Well, this is what they do on on the like sports talk shows is that the person who is like relentlessly criticizing an athlete when that athlete then wins, they say, like, well, you wouldn't have got there without my motivation. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you yeah, there's, there's I, no there's no reason why you can't take credit for this. Yeah, I think you would have got there <laughs> without me. Uh, so you can see this this the thing that he made there. It's a an impossible. Like literally, you can inspect it. You can check it out. You can look at every detail about it. And wow, just you know, phenomenal. And it's so. signed. It's dated. Wow, that's incredible. So, yeah. uh, uh, what do we suppose the takeaway lesson from uh, this particular tale is? Is it? Don't uh, listen to me. Yes. Yeah. Don't listen to Andrew. <laughs> Uh, I, I think definitely there's something in there about having a specific clarity of vision because I don't think he was mm -hmm. confused at all about what the end goal of his heist was. And he knew, he, and I think that he knew, I had another conversation. There's a bartender there at, at, at uh, the Magic Castle who is a actor. He's a neat, he's a very talented guy, super nice guy, charismatic, good looking guy that you, you find out as an actor, you're not at all surprised. And then I I flip through to watching TV and all of a sudden I'll see him, you know, on a computer terminal or something like this. So he's just a person that pops up. And I was talking to him a bit about 
because he talked about how he went through acting and he went through the point where he was put on a pilot and was going to get the pilot. Then they said, we want to put you as a second. He was fine with this. Then they wanted to change it. And then he just, they kind of went through so many changes and just jerked him around so much. He said he quit. And then he, you know, worked, uh, ran a bar for a while. And then, you know, years later, his, you know, casting agent, really big, famous casting agent, where the reps came and said, what are you doing? And he's like this, like, no, you need to get back and act. He's like, no. And then he said, you know what? Maybe I do. Cause I came out here to be an actor and yes. I got confused about, their role of what, but yeah. the idea, I mean, all seriousness, like he came out to act and like, yeah, you try to get, you get, Oh, you can, you have, you can have the carpet yanked out from under you. But if you're just like, no, I just want to act. And if I get the role, great. But if I get to be on set and be around people, that's my goal. And so he kind of realized his, his goal was he just, he wanted to be an actor. He wanted to act if getting fame and all these things might be great, but that's what he realized. Like, Oh no, I didn't come out here just to be famous. I came out here to work with actors and, and explore my craft. So I think, having that healthy relationship of why you do something is really important for Simon. It was like, he wanted to perfect this to get the same. Can he as a performer and as a very clever person, take this to a technical level. Can you bring this to the point that it could win the most, the the biggest competition in the world for magic? That was his question. Like, can I do that? Can I, and it, maybe if he didn't get it this year, maybe two years later, he would have, you know, maybe he still would have wanted to cling to this. And then, you know, with my friend Jeff, it's like, Jeff's like, my goal is to do the thing I want to do is just to be around other actors. So the takeaway is just have a know why you're in it, know why you're in it. And maybe you're in it to get to a point and then move on to something else. Or maybe you're in it just because it's going to be a passion that stays with you the rest of your life. Yeah. I, yeah. The, the idea of having a North star moving, moving, moving toward yeah. it. it. It certainly clarifies yeah. a lot. And, and especially when things are not going, uh, not going great. Uh, just knowing like, okay, well then today I just take a small step forward. Yeah, and you don't have to have, you know, you don't have to have a grand vision of things either. You can just do a thing and explore it and find, and I would say that, uh, I would say, Brian, you're in my journey in magic is kind of similar in that sort of thing where we knew, we knew what we didn't want to do, which was the normal thing. And then we went into performing and we went into that. And then we sort of saw like what was out there for us and then kind of moved from point to point into now, you yeah, know, now and, you're a broadcaster. I I think both of us definitely share the fact that we knew that magic was a part of a journey, but uh, not necessarily the the end of one. Uh, you know, uh, there are times I feel guilty about uh, not still currently touring, but, you know, I've, I've also seen how difficult it is to raise a family when you're away from home for so many days out of the year. And then I think uh, uh, ain't nobody respects Johnny Carson less because he at some point stopped doing magic. Same thing with uh, Steve Martin or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think that that I, I would say Brian's weird psychology, it still affects him and makes him hard, makes it hard for him to appreciate the fact of like, how many best-selling comedy albums have you done? <laughs> you know, how many of these other things have you done that aren't directly magic at all, but are entertainer things that are just amazing and complex? Well, well, and, and I think that there is a bit of bliss in that seductive having a label, whatever that label is. I mean, uh, I twenty years ago, I got to say. You know, who am I? I am a touring stage magician. How, how do I know it? Because I do this many dates per year and won these awards or whatever. But now I don't I don't know what to say. Uh, have you guys gone through that? Like in terms of just figuring out like what 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 your label is or, or do you care? I mean, podcasting has large has come become enough of a thing that you can say it and people at least know what it is. Like if I say that I podcast for a living, then people are like, oh, okay. They have successes in their mind for which I can then explain that I'm a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of, but still making a living doing it and, and making a pretty good living. So it's like that, that has helped. That was not the case, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago. But now that, you know, you've, you've seen major showbiz stories about, podcast getting acquired and and you know now it, it, it's become you know what mega celebrities will will get paid to do uh that that has has helped so i i think podcasting is is easier as an explanation than it ever has been uh what about you andrew so yeah obviously it's hard if people ask me what do i do i do stumble because i'm like what do i say because 
um, doing kind of the, the two biggest hats I wear now are the writing books, which, you know, if you mention, oh, you write books, we go, oh, that's cute. You know, how's that working out for you? And it's like, well, you're like really well uh, by luck. But uh, and then the AI stuff, which is now becoming a bigger thing where I interface with people a lot. So it's hard because I kind of go like, how do I define myself? What do I say? And so I don't I'm not bothered by the fact that it's hard to define myself. I like the fact that, you know, I can I get a multitask and do these different things. I consider myself very fortunate. But it, but it is a thing of like, you know, what am I on my taxes? I write writer, you know, I just put writer, you know, cause it's just an easy sort of way to sort of describe that all. But I, I it was funny cause I ran into, I ran into one of the former kids. One of these used to be part of the, there's a program magic castle called the magic castle juniors. And I ran into him and, uh, and he ended up creating his own playing card company doing really well by that. And he, he just sees me from across the room and goes, dude, so I'm talking to the such and such, this film director, you know, who we've worked with. He's a great guy. And he's telling me how he got access to Dolly to use this. And he had to do a Zoom call to people from OpenAI. And he goes, and one of them was Andrew Maine. And he's like, what's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's just this funny, like, well, let me catch you up. Uh, since you knew me in the world of magic, you know, things have happened. But it is yeah. fun that the nice thing about being in different worlds is when you see them intersect. You know, you see them connect from one to the other. So, uh, I uh... yeah, I don't have a label. I uh, 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 I mean, maybe a year or so ago now, uh, I I I, used, I, I made I, I've made music in the past. I've made a couple of albums and some songs and stuff. Dropped a few beats. Yeah. Um. But if uh, I, I, it must be a few years ago now, I had to pretty actively go like, I think I'm done being a musician right now. I don't think I do music right now, and it was very painful because I had a lot of good memories and a lot of good experiences doing it. You know, I learned a lot. I know a lot of, of stuff and there's nothing to say. I can't do it at the drop of a hat, but it, there was sort of just the weighing on me of like, well, you are able to, you have done it so much in the past. You've got websites and you've got them up for sale and all these other things. Um, but the pressure of ha holding onto that label and not doing anything with it or either because I feel like I can't or I won't or X, Y, or Z that way that, that really did weigh on me really heavy for a long time. And it is bittersweet to, to take that action to say, I'll probably just take this sticker off for right now. Um, but it's, it's way better than the alternative, which is just, it's always right there in the back of your head. Well, eh, you're the, pun punishing yourself for like lingering expectations of like, Oh, if you're going to call yourself a blank, then why aren't you blanking? Exactly. Um, and, and I, I, it's, it's tough. Cause we, cause I started music as a hobby. I've only really done music as a hobby. I would think, um, more or less. And, um, I don't know. We have such this, there's such a, a a strong push to like be good, be better at your thing. Um, and that's why I like uh, the, the advice of like, you don't have to be good at your hobbies. <laughs> you shouldn't have to worry about being good at them because that is such a deterrent. If it is not a thing you're staking your life on, you know, life or death, like, oh man, I just need to get better at this game or this card trick or this, uh, what have you. Um, and of course, the more you think that way, the the faster you the, you throttle out any joy you might have been getting from it. Exactly. And so, knowing knowing the goal, right? Um, I'm I'm playing this video game to enjoy myself, not to be the best person in the world at it. Um, unless that's a thing that drives you and motivates you in a way that's healthy. So, you know, sometimes letting yeah. go. I mean, it's a great way to describe it. it. It is a hobbies were easier to understand when everybody had sort of a nine to five and you stayed in it and you had magazines about this woodworking and stuff was like, oh, the thing you do in the evening, it's the thing you do to relax or whatever. But as we we shift to this world where our roles change and our hobbies can become actual more often than before, our hobbies can become occupations. It is it's hard because you feel like you have to justify it. You feel like you have to sort of explain to people, why do you do this thing? Or you'd share it. And people are like, like 
you know, if you say you're a writer, I'd be like, oh, have you ever been published? You know, if you were going to ask you this, because we're, you'd be like, what else is the goal? Oh, I'm a musician. You know, like, where do you play? It's like, I don't know. My basement, you know? And so. Yeah. And I, ne- I, I, I never I, played live. Like, I, that's always, that was always a thing that hung on that specific label was like, oh yeah, I make music. Do you play? No, I don't. It's not that type of thing. But there's there's expectations, cultural expectations. Yeah, I think that we we is probably it starts with us when somebody tells us or we learn about somebody's hobby, just to ask them, you know, about it itself. What do they like about it? What's interesting? You know, what's new for them or whatever. I because I do that like in L.A. When you talk to people, you have people who are there's a thing they want to be doing. And then there's their job, you know, there's this thing. It's like, and, and you don't want to go like, if you go any other place, any other, you know, sit, state, you go like, what do you do? It's going to be a lot of alignment there. Like, oh, I do this. But here it could be like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm either, maybe they're a musician, but they work during the day at a Starbucks. And so, you know, I always ask them, what's your passion? Like, what's the thing that drives you the most? What do you work towards? Mm. So yeah. it sounds a little bit nebulous, but it gives people the opportunity to say, oh, I love doing this because I want to hear... If somebody says, oh, I like to write, you know, mystery novels or, you know, romance novels in the evening, I want them to tell me about that. I want to tell them about the thing they're excited about and not feel like they have to justify it. Yeah. Yeah. So you can eliminate your competition, pushing them off. Of That's shh, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very romantic push off the bridge. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I ran into a uh, gentleman last night who works at the Magic Castle and hadn't talked to him, like hadn't been there two years. And then um, he he's like, hey, we, I want to grab lunch. And then uh, uh, he's like, you know, you're the one, because he, he's been excited about it. He's writing and wrote a novel. He says, you're the one that just convinced me, you know, to do this, to could do this. And, it, and it, his part uh-huh. of me is like, you're I'm like, that's flattering. And also it's like, you're like, this guy can do it. I could do it, <laughs> you know, which... <laughs> It's true. <laughs> you know, it was also that yeah. side of it. We're like, you know, I'm like, well, this idiot can just write a book. How hard can it be? <laughs> so. well, I, I, I think it's less the, the idiocy part, but more like you can't watch somebody go from zero to uh, awesomeness and, and see each iteration and not believe that it's possible. You know, it's, it's um, uh, whether it's a three-year-old learning to take the steps or uh, uh, somebody you already respect who's trying something you've never seen them try before and watch them iterate their way to, you know, suddenly there's uh, there's a photo of their book on Times Square or what have you. Yeah. If, you know, for example, hypothetically. Hypothetically. Uh, hypothetically. I, who does that? I, who could even uh, get that glorious award? Well, I'll throw in there too. Like, I would say that one of the biggest lessons that was reinforced for me was we all got into podcasting around the same time. I may have gotten maybe first with streaming when I worked on the Randy show Mm -hmm. or early on, but watching Brian and Justin and then and putting in the reps because time in is irrelevant, it's repetitions in a feedback loop to know that you're getting better. That is one of the things I've really just begun to appreciate is just how much. You know, and that, a kind of a thing I played later on when I wanted to write books was like, well, instead of waiting, you know, 20 years to write 10 books, write 10 books in a year and, you know, try to get in better because those repetitions, those reps matter. They really, really, really matter. I oh, watch yeah. you guys do a show and I see how smooth you are and how you know everybody's bit. I'm like, well, I've been doing this just as much time, but it's like, yeah, but not like 10 times a week and all that. And there's also the natural skill thing, too, but I'll just overlook that because... <laughs> Because you have so much of it, so much more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, clearly. He has a natural skill of overlooking natural skill. Timing! <laughs> oh. uh, by the oh. way, uh, that's been one of my favorite things is uh, my pick is is uh, watching Br- uh, Bryce just crush it at TikTok uh, with the uh, Mono Rogue stuff and with the Great Night stuff. It's just... Um, uh, I it, it you single handedly Bryce is making me enjoy the, the platform. Uh-huh. It's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I, I will say that I will totally co-sign on that. TikTok is a much better platform when every uh, 18th video is you, <laughs> <laughs> edited in a way that is uh, 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 fun and interesting. Like, oh, and that was pretty funny. Like, oh, yeah, look at yeah. that. Look at that. Well, uh, you know what? Then I've that gives me a pick 
that I can give uh, to our listeners. So uh, I'll, I'll, we, we stream these podcasts out on Twitch, and there's an app that I use that makes it that helps make some things easier to make them into TikToks. Um, it's on the iPhone. It's called Stream Kit. Um, it's it's very simple. It is not fully. It doesn't have all the features I would love in it, but it's but it's cool and it works. And it's uh, it is a subscription thing. It's like it's like three dollars a month or something. It's an it's like not a lot, but it's um so it, so it's like okay that's I can that, that's that's fine, um but that helped and that having something that can make it very very easy to 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 make clips whether it's making them out of final videos whether you're shooting them on your phone whether you're pulling them from twitch or wherever um making it easier to do that is the is is the biggest thing um to getting from point point a to point b on that so i I like stream kit they do have a free mode as well if you got an iphone so uh well uh, i i i dig apps that have sane pricing policies yeah. And and I, I don't think it's wrong for and I think now and more and more is often you have to do a lot more support for stuff for people to do subscription based stuff. A lot of people get upset like, ah, why am I paying for a subscription? I should buy it once. I'm like, yeah, but now when you put out an app three months from now, Apple's can say, hey, here's a new update. You got to make sure this app works. Yeah. And yeah. there's there's and some things are too simple, like too simple. Like, why are you even why did you make this? You know, but some things are very useful. So I think that's fine. Sometimes you get apps like, well, we think we're worth ten dollars a month. I'm like. You know what I get for ten bucks a month? I can get a lot now in this yeah. world. It's a competitive world, and so if your app, it maybe it's worth ten bucks a month, and you'll see sometimes app developers shut down. Like we were worth it, nobody paid. It's like well, a market decided. And yeah, to make, and, yeah. And, and you got to make me fall in love with you first before you before you hit me up for ten dollars a month. Like like make make a compelling product, and then sell me things that make that product even better for ten dollars a month. That's that's the thing that always bothers me when it's like. Hey, before you even walk in the door, it's this expensive thing. And it's like, okay, well, then I guess I'm just going to wait and see if a bunch of people like you. Yeah. And if they don't, then. Uh, or have a good get, free get mode. Wrecked. Have a good free mode. Like drafts. I don't, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm, an, I'm not in love with drafts. I like drafts. It's an iOS text editor. I like it. Probably wouldn't pay $10 a month for it. But it has all sorts of features and stuff that people who do love it and have been using it for a decade uh, will pay ten dollars a month instead of buying it every year um and the free version is just exactly what i need and maybe if i need more than that then it's right there but uh you kind of have to get people where they are yeah i remember there was a pretty it was a nice note app that i used and then they switched to like a a ten dollar a month whatever sort of thing and i'm like you're kidding. Like, you're like, that's, you're like, you're, you're kidding. And then like, there was another writing app that I used. They went to like a $15 per month or something. Jesus. And I'm like, you're not, you're not that good. <laughs> you know, you're cool, but it's just like, you're not that good. You have and to that, compete with notepad to and any scrap of paper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Notepad, notepad's gotten great. Notepad's gotten really good. You know? So there was a, uh, anyway. one of my favorite memes is the one with, uh, there's like a, a, a dullard, on one side and then a big, you know, like bell curve. And then at the end is like a, a super genius in a cloak. Uh, and then in the middle is everybody else. And uh, uh, it's it meant to symbolize that the very dumb and the very smart both use the same thing. And then it's everybody in the middle that complicates it and makes it super weird. And there was one with like a, a, the, the meme where it was the, the the notes app for both the dumb person ah. and the super genius <laughs> and everyone else has these like crazy like notion to docs uh, uh to, to 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 dropbox to ulysses like like these like gigantic chain solutions or whatever yeah i i have friends that are like super into obsidian and like have all these plugins and i believe it i think that for them it's an amazing thing mm -hmm. but i'm like i make a note Pull up my iPhone. There's the note on my iPad. Where is that note? I'll check notes. Hey, there's my note. It's the you know, note. On my computer. Hey, look, notes. <laughs> you know, it's just this is there. I didn't install it. It's there, and it's just it's it's in the cloud. And the Apple finally kind of got cloud saving pretty good. So yeah. Uh, I, I have a I have a pick. Uh, I, I really enjoyed a movie. Oh, what movie was that? Uh, Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. Oh, that's right. Uh, it is 
uh, uh, Kristen Wiig, and I, I was unfamiliar with the other lady. Annie uh, Mimolo? Yeah, that's her. Uh, uh, for whatever reason, I thought this was going to be a more earnest movie than it was. It is very wacky. Very like like uh, uh, Anchorman, Austin Powers level, a uh, 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 surreality. But in that vein, if you enjoyed those movies, it was the most uh, 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 fun that I have had with a movie like that in in a very 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 long time. So it was a a very pleasant surprise. I would uh, uh, encourage everybody to go to go check it out. Barb and Star. Go to Vista Del Mar. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, I and, never. And you know the Austin Powers. Uh, uh, or that it, I didn't put it together until you said that, but it does feel very Austin Powers, huh? Yes. And yes. Annie and Momolo and Christian Wick, they also wrote Bridesmaids. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So this is this is a a passion project. I would assume that they've wanted to do for for a little, or, or just I don't know. Yeah. So they work well together and. Uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, boy, is it, it, it goes places. I mean, like th there's, there's, you know, this element of, uh, you know, Adam McKay, uh, cause it, but it was pre, um, you know, uh, the, the breakup of, of Will Ferrell and, and McKay, but like very much in that, in that vein, but like. I guess when you only come out with one of those movies every five years, then they're going to be really good. I think it really like, like the, their drop in quality only came because they got so popular. They had to do four of them every five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And Kristen Wiig is just such a talent, just such a talent. And she's, she's great. She's great. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, I will say you have to be into Kristen Wiig characters because like there, there, there are two of them and they're both very Kristen Wiig, but uh, uh, it just from the very opening of the film, you realize this is a bizarre, a bizarre movie where where uh, 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 a lot of things can happen, and that is uh, it is well worth your time. Yeah, I think it was on. I think I saw it on Amazon Prime, Prime Video. I don't know. It was uh, uh, yeah. uh if you watch it the way that I watched it, you are on a KLM flight from <laughs> Amsterdam to Austin. There we go. Uh, any other picks? I got yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up. I'm gonna I watch a lot of YouTube, um, and it's just the quality of stuff on there is amazing. I find so many different channels that I like that I just it's one of my favorite things to do at night is to just sort of sit back, watch something, and you know listen to somebody who just is really passionate about a topic explain it explore it in detail and just and I, I think the quality of we stuff we get now there is better than most of the stuff you see produced because this is done by people who are passionate and love and the algorithm is algorithm is harsh yeah. so i will pick one of my random ones here uh i mentioned this before but a guy who does these really great deep dives into science fiction is uh quinn it's called quinn's ideas and he is super into like three body problem, Dune, all of this. And so he'll go do these really good discussions, very, very deep level. This guy could be teaching a course on science fiction and fantasy somewhere opinionated, uh, but just just great. And so he has these very long tangents on stuff. Um, so Quinn's ideas. Nice. Cool. And it's neat, too, because he's got half a million subscribers and he's talking about like getting nerdy about, you know, the dune books or whatever and you know foundation and it's just the fact that we live in a world where more people will watch one of his, his videos than watch you know some smaller cable channel shows yeah yeah so yeah it's there's, kind of like there's so many eyeballs on youtube it's hard to ignore that you know swimming in balls <laughs> yeah eyeballs yeah that's what we do here gentlemen it's been up to your eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. It's been after. <laughs> All righty. Hey, good shows, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. We'll yeah. Be back in a few, yeah. We'll be back in a few hours. We've got cord killers. 
Uh, still killing them cords, huh? We're still doing that here in the states. Ah, uh, you know, you'd think you'd uh, think you'd be able to clear them out by now, but holy crap, these no, cords! Uh, look, uh, uh, they're they're like Hydra, um, right. in that they're a secret organization that <laughs> is always whispering that their is, name. That is run by Gary Shannon. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> yep, yeah, yep. You're, you're picking up what I'm putting down. Yeah. Uh, I already. You guys right. watch R.I.P. the new legend. trailers, the new. The new phase 12 stuff. Uh, yeah, we talked about those yeah. on Horde Killers. What? The, the, the... They detailed phase four and five and six. Of... Oh, I did. I did see that. I saw that. It, man, these these shows, you know, they, they make money. Do they? Phase four. Kevin yeah, there was, like a, there was golf, like golf score. Yeah, <laughs> there was like a big thing about how like Thor Love and Thunder was like, like, oh, no, it's it had a big dip and. And uh, it's it, it's a, a sign of superhero fatigue. And then, like, you just look at it. It's like, oh, no, it's it's going to make more than Ragnarok. It's, it's going to make more uh, than, uh, uh, I think, anything else in the franchise. Wow. And it didn't even have it. It's not going to have a China run. So, yeah, I, people love them. I loved, like, I get some people like, hey, Thor loved them. Like, oh, I heard negative. I'm like, I loved that movie. I like, don't know. I don't know what people are talking about. That movie ruled. I, I thought mean, it was I mean, great. It, yeah. it's, it's, I mean, yes. The the one thing I will see is that it is candy. And if you want candy, then candy is delicious. It doesn't have to be a. I mean, but here's the, I mean, but it's, it's candy that has the opening scene. It's spoilers for the opening scene. Uh, a dying man brings his dying daughter through a desert. She dies. Yeah. <laughs> like, yep. Anyway, like here's some yeah. bubblegum oh, hair metal. Like, da, 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 and so it's like it's like I, I really I love the movie from that very moment. We're like, no, we're gonna start for real. We're gonna start really, really heavy, uh, yeah. and and then lighten it up. And it was I don't know. I thought it was great. Well, we're gonna I, go lighten it up uh, off off the air. Lighten it up. Other shows. Oh, uh, did you have something, Andrew? Andrew? No, no, I, I'm like, yeah, I just like Thor, like one of them is Christian Bale's in a different movie, and it's great. Yeah, it's just he's he's, and it's a great like. You cut back to him, and you're like, oh, we're having fun. Back to him, like, oh. you know, <laughs> yeah. like it's just, hey, kitties, when he shows up at the, oh, just I'm like, great. I'm just, I'm yeah. all aboard. Alrighty, everybody. Well, thank you for getting weird with us. We'll kill your cords in a bit. Yep. Ah.